Hello and welcome. Native American Indians marched on the longest walk 30 years ago to fight for their land rights. Now their mission is to save the planet. The longest walk too has taken a group of activists on a 5,800 kilometer trek from San Francisco to Washington DC, promoting conservation, collecting rubbish and raising awareness along the way. On this show, a look at the Native American community from two angles. First, we ask how effectively can the Native American community raise awareness through their longest walk? Remember, you can reach us at the numbers at the bottom of your screen. And joining us for our discussion are Mark Tayak, a coordinator for The Longest Walk 2, and Native American activist Jay Winter Nightwolf, who also hosts a weekly radio show called Nightwolf on Pacifica. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank Good you. Good to have you both here. Thank you. Well, congratulations on it. And uh, Mark, if I could start with you and ask how the walk went, you know, the kind of attendance you had and the kind of activities going on. The Longest Walk has gained a lot of support nationwide, but also international. There's two main talking points that they want to bring attention to the world. The first talking point is protection of our Mother Earth. We all live on this same planet, we all live on this same Earth, and we all live here collectively together. So the survival of American Indian people and the human race counts on the survival of our Mother Earth. But the second talking point for the longest walk is protection of sacred sites. We're finding that now today, even though there's federal laws that came about from the original Longest Walk of 1978. One month later, the United States Congress realized that the American Indian did not even have religious freedom in his own home. So they passed what was called the American Indian Religious Freedom Act to guarantee Native people the right to religious freedom. We also have a special act that's called the American Indian Graves Protection Act. But we're finding that our ancestral remains are being dug up sent to museums through Washington, D.C., throughout the world, and we're asking the world now to give our ancestors back to us. Jay, I know you're, you're something of a media personality, you have a radio show as well, but how hard is it to get some of these uh, issues that affect the Native American Indian community out there to the general public who perhaps know very little about it? The hardest issue that we have had is to be able to communicate on a national and international level. Because as you know, the American Indian has been subjugated and marginalized for over 500 years. Our plight is to get the answers, to get not the answers, but get, get the story out there, the many stories that we have. Uh, this one story of survival of the planet is ultimately important, not just to American Indians, but is more important to the entire human family. And Mark just mentioned the, uh, our, our sacred sites. If you had, let's, let's take for example, you have a church, a mosque or a synagogue that you attend. If someone was to come to your place of worship and tell you we're gonna take that from you and we're gonna build a mall or we're gonna build a housing complex, how would that make you feel? It would make you feel like you have no place to talk to your God and worship your God. This is what's happening to us and this is why we're fighting so hard. And the Graves Protection Act, you know, they dig out people's bones up, they put them in museums, there are over 225,000 throughout the United States of ancestral remains and funerary that's sitting in lockers and universities and basements in universities, but the fight goes on just to right. get our ancestors back to where they came from. Mark, tell me about the, the Clean Up America campaign because you guys on this walk and it's a long trek, you're actually out there literally doing some good, just cleaning up the, 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 the path as well. Well, what the longest walk wanted to see uh, as they walked across what we call Indian country, mm. or what people refer to as United States, they wanted to clean up our Mother Earth and leave a clean trail behind them so that they can send a message to people throughout the world. It's time to protect our Mother Earth. I'm a member of the Piscataway Indian Nation and our tribe is the local tribe right to the state of Maryland. And they've already projected for that area, what's known as the Chesapeake Bay region, by the year 2050, because of global warming, we will no longer see the beautiful pine trees that we have, the beautiful oak trees we have, the four seasons, our spring, summer, fall, and winter, that we will be living in a subtropic climate. And instead of seeing our oak trees and our pine trees, we're going to see palm trees. And global warming is something that will affect everyone. Now, uh, Jay, you also had a, a, a slight variation on the original uh, longest walk in that there was two routes in this case, wasn't there? Yes, there was. That, yeah. Uh, they started out on February 11th from Alcatraz Island. Right. There's a northern route and a southern route. 
And what happened, they covered approximately 8,000 miles combined just to come here to Washington, D.C. to bring attention to the problems that are affecting all of us. Why split the routes up? What was the, uh, the reason? We wanted to cover more area. Mm -hmm. We wanted to expose this to more people. In terms of uh, judging how, how, how much of an impact the walk has had, I mean, of course, that first longest walk 30 years ago, uh, it actually did manage to prevent some legislation going through. It did protect some of the rights, didn't it? Well, in 1978, the original longest walk came about because there was 11 anti-Indian bills being introduced to Congress, bills that would take away our fishing rights, hunting rights, educational rights, housing rights. And at one time, our people, we inhabited what we call Turtle Island, but what's known to people today as the Western Hemisphere. The entire Western Hemisphere is what we call Indian country. But if we look at the borders of United States only, and what little lands we have left today that's referred to as reservations, even taking away what little land we have left, each of the 11 anti-Indian bills was defeated in Congress. So the word, as the longest walk started in San Francisco, they, they grew a lot of momentum and it grew with a lot of support. So the time it actually hit here in Washington, D.C., there was over 100,000 American Indians, our friends, our allies, and our supporters. So that message was heard. Jay, we had an email that came in from Sydney in Australia. And uh, S. Anoma in Sydney said, similar to Australia's indigenous people, aboriginals, Native Americans have had a close relationship with the land. What are their plans for conserving the land? I mean, you've touched on some of this, but uh, specifically. We are about to approach a lot of the corporations and people that actually do things to the air and to the water that's making it unfavorable for humans to survive. And we will continue to protest these things. We will continue to work with county governments, uh, state governments, and even the federal government to try to get this legislation passed so that it will protect all of us. It's very important that we look at this as a global issue because human beings everywhere are being affected. Interestingly, I can follow up with an email we got, and I give this to you, Mark. It came from uh, Jim in Virginia here in the USA. And Jim wrote in saying, I've driven through some of the tribal lands, and what I saw and heard broke my heart. Where is the federal government, and why are they turning a blind eye to this issue? They've turned a blind eye for 500 years. For 500 years, they've turned a blind, a blind eye to the American Indian. So we're trying to take our own future and our own destiny into our own hands. We are the caretakers of the Western Hemisphere. As other people and other nationalities throughout the world, it's their responsibility to take care of their sector of the world. So with this longest walk, this is a call of action that we're sending out to all people here in the United States. All life is sacred. It's time to heal our Mother Earth. Another email we've gotten, uh, Jay, if I can put this to you. This came from Alaska, and Glenn wrote in asking, what are your views on drilling for oil in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, knowing that there are tribal nations living off the land there? My views are, it's wrong. It's absolutely wrong, because those people are people that live off of the caribou. And if you destroy the Arctic Refuge, then the whole cycle of life disappears. And what will happen to the tribal people if they don't have their food to eat? And this is how they live. This is wrong, you know. Uh, there are other places you can drill or you really don't have to drill. What about alternative energy? What about the wind? What about the sun? The sun never stops shining. Is, is the movement fairly uniform across all the, the Indian tribes? Is it everyone involved? I mean, is there a fairly good common you know, feeling across everyone on, on the mission? I would think so. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I would think so. Yeah. And then uh, just a final thought then, uh, uh, Mark, and what happens next? You've, got, you've done the walk. What follow-up is there? Well, the walk will arrive here in Washington, D.C. tomorrow, July 11th. But the w that is only the arrival date. It's not the end of the walk. It's only the arrival date. The true work will begin then. All right. Mark and Jay, thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Well, don't go after the break. We talked to the controversial actor and activist, Russell Means, about his bid to withdraw the Lakota Nation's ancestral lands from the United States. We'll be right back. Don't tell me, 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 don't t